Greetings. There was a question. A question was presented to us, and I'm sure maybe some of you all probably have, have, have thought on this, perhaps, at some point. But perhaps it might not have come to one's immediate attention, and it's contained in this uh, week's uh, Sabbath and sabbatical uh, study that's called um, Wayak El, or Sebisabo, Sebisabo. Um, which means, and, and he gathered, and it, it's from the key words found in Exodus, Exodus chapter 35, verse 1. And in a brief sabbatical um, introduction to this week's Sabbath, we had touched on it um, in passing. And even afterward, um, we, uh, we thought on it, and we said that we have to do a, a, a brief segment on this particular matter, and it's concerning kindling a fire. Is it permissible to kindle a fire? Some diligent um, disciples that come as Amorit have in the past and even presently have observed that in the book of Exodus, where it lays down the basic um, um, law, um, the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, that it repeats in a couple of areas. And in this particular sabbatical reading, verse 3, it says, Bemader yawo chachu wust, besen betak and isatin tanidudu. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Now, <clears throat> from a superficial and a superficial uh, um, interpretation of this would seem to indicate that one should not light any fire. And this is one of the reasons why um, the other Jews or the European Jews and Ashkenazi and some of the Sephardim as, and, and maybe some others would interpret this as literally, in a literal way, not a spiritual way, a, a Old Testament way without the illumination of the Mashi or the Christ, the Christ mind. Father Christ mind is an overstanding. Remember how Christ would say, Often in the Wengel, in the Gospels, you'll say, you've heard people of old time say such and such, but I say to you. And he, as, as Christ, Jesus Christos himself said, think not that I've come. The Mashi says in Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So it wasn't change as we said, but he's saying that he did not come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill the law. And what Christ, Jesus Christos did was he, he changed the law, but he came to do what? To fulfill 
you know, and this is a very, a very key matter right here. So in that fulfillment of the law, he explained, he uh, clarified, and he uh, deepened many matters. It's the law of, it's the relationship of Christ to the law. What's the relationship of Christos to the law? So let's first begin from the Moshi. Honored his father and the mother, the law, by clarifying, by correcting, by deepening, by enlightening w the true intent of his father and our father, of his God and our God as the very son of God or the Bain Ha Elohim. This is what is important. So now, taking that as a, as a basic perspective, so we are interpreting the Belui Kidan, the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, from the light of the Hadith, the Addis Kidan. So we are looking at the Old Testament through the eyes, or have to look at through the eyes or the perspective of Christ through the illumination of a Jesus Christus of Christ in his kingly character. Now, why is this important? Because it's very important as we now embark on what does it mean when it says, Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Now, the first area that we want to submit into the racket is we want to go to the Jewish um, uh, Chomesh, you know, send all the five books of Moses from the Masoretic, the Masoretic Torah, um, which is used in congregational worship, and we're in Wayakel, Wayachel, Wayakel here. And Moses assembled, Moses assembled. Now this took place on the 11th of the Hebrew month of Tishri, the morrow of what was later to be the Day of Atonement, it is said. The object of the assembly was to ask the people for their free will offerings toward the tabernacle and also to demand the payment of the half shekel and also to demand the payment of the half shekel. Now we touch on the half shekel. Actually the Ethiopian buru, the currency, we spoke on that in the 21st, um, the Ekwit uh, uh Gizeh, was called, Ekwit Arhacho Gizeh al Kitissa, you understand, which we um, have, 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 have now uh, seen um, to be uh, clarified as with the key word, let's just go back there with the key word, the key word there that is uh, 3011, 3011, um, and the key word in that was tekeble, uh, tekeble, and let's just just make a notation right here for our record um, for the record right there so it's tekeble when you take when you receive when you receive uh, ki tessa when you receive so that was speaking on we spoke on the shekel um, somewhat in an introductive way but briefly but now we're going to speak on um, what does it mean to kindle kindle no fire what is meant by this this um somewhat um, metaphoric uh, phraseology, kindle a fire. Now some will say it's obvious, basically light no fire. So that means if you turn on electricity, all that, that's fire. Now some would actually view it from a literal, the liter a literalistic interpretation. Now one thing we have to remember is what the Bible, what the New Testament teaches us that um, the natural man doesn't perceive the spiritual things of God, you see. But the spiritual man understands and understands why the natural man 
sees it naturally. He's able to see it naturally. He is uh, spiritual, but he is in a sense supernatural. So uh, he is not just physical, but he is metaphysical. So the physical interpretation of it would basically state that no physical fire. Is this truly what is meant? So when we looked at the notes that the, um, the Hebrews or the Jews had, and we touched on it before, where it said, kindle no fire. Now the expression Bamarinya is isatin tanidudu, tanidudu. Now it's going to be important for us to have a couple of reference materials. One is the the Wolf Leslaw Concise and Hard Dictionary, because we need to go to the root word. You understand of um, kindle. We need to also look at this word in the Strong's reference through the Masoretic scrolls. We need to also look at this to the Metaf Kedus, you understand? So there's, a, there's, some, there's some background study that we need to do, that we've done in order to present this here and now. But we're pointing this out for all the students and others who want to study this on their own or to develop a system or a process when such a question about a curious verse or a meaning needs to be clarified or, or further illuminated upon. Now, kindling fire on the Sabbath, although included in the general prohibitions against work on the Sabbath, and we find this in Exodus um, 20 and 10, is here specified to indicate either that this form of desecration, unlike other forms, renders, renders the culprit liable to the punishment of flagellation or beating, and not to the death penalty, or that if a man committed several acts of desecration at the same time and in the same circumstances, he has to atone for each one of the acts separately. So this is some of the, the various opinions that has been presented by the Jewish, the Rabim or the Rebim, concerning this particular verse and the meaning here, namely kindling no fire or kindle no fire on the Sabbath. Now, although it says, it continues to state in the footnote, although during festivals, during the Moedim or at the festival, feast and festival, the Ba'alat time, which fall on a weekday, kindling fire for the preparation of food required exclusively for the day is permissible. Kindling of fire for that day is permissible on the Sabbath it said it is forbidden so what we need to do and let's just do this right here let's go to 20 and 10 let's go to Exodus 20 and 10 and see what 20 and 10 basically says 20 and 10 is where it says but the seventh day is the Sabbath to Yahweh to to Yahweh Loheka in it thou shalt not do any manner of work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Now, it specifically does not speak on um, kindling a fire, although we need to understand the cultural context of the time, because see, we're looking at it today. And if we now say, well, no fire was supposed to be kindled in that time, and we remember to keep the Sabbath holy, that means that, well, all electricity, electricity is a fire. So does that mean that electricity has to also be turned off, have to? We have to turn off in order to keep the Sabbath? Remember, the Sabbath was made for man. It was made for man's holistic benefit. The Almighty being far above man and, and his ideas and his vision. You understand? He already sees further ahead than man can even imagine. Understood the holistic benefit of keeping the Sabbath as a what? As a rest day. Because what's written in Orit Zed Sa'ad Mi'raf Salasa Amist or Exodus, the Torah, the Orit Zeh of Sa'at, the coming out, Mi'raf chapter, Salasa 30, Amist 5, 
verse who uh, led verse 2 is important it says sadistic and sarai daragal sabatenyo ken gin la exiabihir ye erafta sen bet ye tekadesa ken ye hon la chikwal ye mi sara betum hulu ye gadal and all who work in it let them be killed you know saying all who work in it all who work in the sabbath and says ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the sabbath day now when we compare but remember the footnote that we gave from the jewish Chomesh, this is just to refer to well what is their perspective what's their interpretation about it now the interpretation is interesting but it's not altogether correct it has certain interesting points and facts that we can glean from it but it's not the true overstanding because besides the majority of so-called orthodox jews reject the moshia as yehoshua although some have seriously and truthfully considered that yehoshua is the moshia so there is still the opportunity for them to come to salvation as well but what we need to understand right here is that the phraseology of kindling a fire and now we're going to bring a next evidence into we're going to look up in our concordance the, the english let's look up in the english concordance what we want to find is the phrase kindle now it's interesting because kindle is a book nowadays they have this new thing called kindle so a lot of the younger um folks the younger generation they don't really use a phrase like kindle a fire you understand because of how um modern forms of language have uh, superseded um, the old English over time. But let's go to the word kindle. We want to look up the word kindle. K-I-N-D-L-E and other words related to it. So here we have kindle. We have kindled. We have kindleth. Now one thing we notice in our preliminary study of this particular portion of scripture Exodus 35 and 3 where it says ye shall kindle no fire and seeing seeking to s no fire throughout your habitation on the Sabbath day a couple of key things here first of all we dealt with just dealt with the portion kindle no fire now what we want to touch on is the word kindle we want to find out other places both in the Hebrew and in the Royal Amharic where the root word that's used here in the the scripture in the respective scriptures where the root word is found now this iota program as we have been um speaking on is is quite is quite valuable to us and we give thanks and praise to to those who created this program because when it, it helps us save time in in biblical studies we get to find out now as we click on as we click on the verse to go into the Strong's Hebrew, the concordance, we have the King James Version, the KJV, with the Strong's numbers. For Kindle, we have the Strong's 1197, the 1197. Now, when we click on that word, the 1197, it brings up um, Ba'ar, Ba'war. Bawar, Ba'ar, Ba'ar, Bawar, which is a prime root, which means to kindle in the example, i.e., uh, consume, to consume by fire, to consume by eating. There's also, as a denominative from 1198, uh, to be or to become, which is interesting, there's another form now of this Ba'ar, Bawar, which means to become brutish to be brutish, to bring, to put, to take, to put away, to take away, to burn, or to cause to eat up, to cause to eat up, to, to feed, to heat, to, to kindle, to set, to set on fire. And in the example of to waste. Now, there are scriptures too that we can follow up. There's many, many scriptures here where this root is found throughout the Bible. Now we don't have the opportunity to go into each of them, so what we're going to do is a a brief summary right here on on Kindle. 
because in our concordance, the Cruden's concordance, we have um, Kindle, and we see that Kindle is associated, even from this particular Strong's, uh, the Strong's Hebrew reference, we see that it can mean to consume by fire, or it can mean to consume by eating. So kindle a fire, to consume by fire, to consume by eating. Now, yes, it says kindle no fire. Now, the word kindle can also mean to become brutish or to, to bring something or to, to put something away, to take it away, to burn, to cause it to be eaten up. You understand? To cause it to be set on fire, to cause it to be, be wasted. But now the phraseology, when we understand the parabolic logic of, of the people of the Bible, of how they use words, how they use words to describe certain ideas. We can call it the Hebrew slang. You understand that? What, what the Hebrew slang to say how they use a particular um, uh, highly descriptive um, form of language saying one thing but describing something else. You understand? Or describing something on another level, another layer of consciousness, a more spiritual la level. So we have the physical kindling of a fire, but now we need to understand this particular command here. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. We need to understand it physical level we touched on lighting a fire does it mean light no fire today that means turn off all your electricity everything is that the reference of the almighty or is the reference uh, or a metaphysical it is something dealing metaphysically when we look at the 1197 the hebrew 1197 we have yet to to address the um the uh ethiopic as of yet, whether from the be from the Nadade, Nedade, Nedade, and then the uh, Tenadade, you understand, form in the Ethiopic and the Amharic, but we're touching on the Hebrew first and the Masoretic first. We see from the meaning that's provided to us, 1197, it's a prime root, Ba'ar, 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 means to kin do, to consume by fire or by eating. So the idea of being consumed by fire. Now what we find is that fire, the idea of fire and kindling symbolizes anger and wrath. Anger and wrath. Now this is the metaphysical, the metaphysical overstanding of kindle no fire on the sin bet day. The metaphysical overstanding of kindle no fire on the Senbet day has to do with matters of anger and wrath. You understand? Like I said, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't carry these toxic, burning, consuming attitudes in your heart and in your mind they will consume you so when it says it's saying the sabbath time and when we return to verse 2 it puts it into context it says that six days shall work be done. There are six days for work to be done, Sabatenyauk and Gin, but on the seventh day, Le Egziabeher, for the sustainer, for Elohim, for Yah, Yodhe, Wauhe, for the Almighty, Ye Ereft, Ye Ereft of rest, Senbet, a Sabbath of rest. So it's putting the idea of the Senbet, the Senebete, you understand, and the Ereft. Rest, a, a senbet of rest, and a holy or a set apart day, it will be, he or it will be for you all, that whoever works, you understand, or whoever works in it, all that work in it, let him be killed. 
Let them kill themselves. You see how, like, when, when I, let's look at this metaphysic. Let's look at society now. People don't generally, even in this so-called post-Christian um, society, that's originally why they came over here for religious freedom, right? That's what they told us, for religious freedom. But they're not so religious anymore. They, they work 24-7. You understand? And they, they're killing themselves. They are putting themselves to death. You put yourself to death if you don't keep the Sabbath as a rest day. And not just not working, as verse 3 shows us, where it says, Bemaderiao chachuist besenbet and satin atanidu. Do not kindle any fire in your habitation. And the, the key word there is maderia, maderia. You understand, which means a dwelling place, a living place. But it doesn't say in your tents. Notice, it didn't say in your tents. It could have used the word dinquan, dinquan no chacho. You understand? It didn't say in your houses. You understand? It could say beto chacho. You understand? But it uses the word habitations, bamarinya, bemaderia, or chacho. Now, here's what's very, very interesting. When we look at the word maderia, you understand? Now let's look at this from a from an Ethiopic. Let's look at this from an Ethiopic perspective. Let's put this in our search right here and let's look up maderia in the New Testament. And here is what is very you understand or you know, um here's what's very, very interesting when we get to the New Testament and we look up uh, this word. You remember when Christ says in my father's house. Remember that? In my father's house. You understand? In my father's house there are many mansions and he goes on to say that if it was not so he uses the word menoria, which is living space, which is a space of living, right? But then when we address, um, when he says, Baabate bait bizu menoria alle, in dihis bayhon bal huachu neber sifra zegaja lachu zen ehedalahuna. Now, when we put in to this search, maderia, you understand, maderia. In the, in the New Testament, okay, okay, yeah, um, in the, the New Testament, Right, it has the idea of okay. Let's just go to the Old Testament for a moment. There's eight references right there, but what we wanted to show is okay. Okay, this is it. So now, when we understand the word maderia, let's understand the word maderia in context of the Kutera Matinya. Let's study the verse. To study the number, the verse. Let's look up the word habitations. Habitations maderia. Right? Remember we said he didn't say your houses. He didn't say because see the tabernacle is known as a maderia. See the tabernacle is also called a maderia, a dwelling place, a habitation. You understand? Uh, um and when we look at this word, the word is more sharp. Moshab, Moshab in the Hebrew. Moshab, Moshab. And it's from the Strong's 4186. Moshab, Moshab. Moshab, Moshab. Or Moshab, right? And Moshab, they say from the 3427, it's a seat, right? A seat. Because it connects actually with the word Wenber um, Bamarinya. You understand? In, in the, in the Gutis. You understand? In Menber. In the good is figuratively, it's a site. Abstractly, in an abstract idea, it's a session. So we have to understand this word from, say, from its Hebrew Masoretic root. 
the old percent Masoretic root because the, the Ethiopic is and the Amharic is really clear but the English if you study even the King James well and then you compare the study of the King James with the Ethiopic what you will find from studying the King James you understand studying it and show yourself approved to God's standard of overstanding you will see that the King of Kings has that already that meaning is already embedded in there you understand from if you are able to read the Met of Kedus you understand as a faithful and an, and an educated or learned and enlightened Ethiopian now this word Maderia or Maderia Wachachu in the Royal Amharic you understand in the Hebrew is Moshab. Now Moshab can mean a seat, right? Figuratively, it's a site. In a figurative sense, it's some site, you know, a habitation. Abstractly, it's a session, like a session in the abstract sense. So the Ereft, the Ereft Senbet is a session, you understand? A session of resting from all work but it's not just only resting from all work or labor but also resting one's spirit you understand their maderia you understand their their dwelling place that's what that's one way we would translate the word um maderia the dwelling because ader mader means to spend the night you understand to abide the, the sense and the idea of the word maderia, you understand, is our abiding place. So when we look at the Hebrew moshab, 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 we have uh, it as a seat, figuratively a site, abstractly a session, and it says by extension. Now when we extend this meaning, it's an abode, the place or the time. So it's not just it's not a physical it's a metaphysical reality even as we learn this by studying the the Hebrew and comparing it to the royal Amharic of the Met of Caduce, the book of the seven seals of the king of kings by implication population by implication a population as in the assembly a dwell to dwell in or a dwelling or a dwelling with the idea of place a dwelling place wherein dwelt wherein that dwelt in inhabited an inhabited place a seat a sitting or a situation a sitting a situation or a sojourning so as we begin to understand this idea and then look at the phrase isatina tanididu you understand kindling a fire and understanding even from the Hebrew that we're able to easily reference because of this program right now to kindle to consume by fire or by eating to consume to be eaten up now kindling a fire these two words are two ideas you understand coming into context with each other has to do with anger certain negative certain heated certain certain consuming states of mind do not be eaten up by anything that causes anger wrath or agitation on the senbet day so in your dwelling you understand, as you are dwelling in a Sabbath or a sabbatical consciousness, part of your metaphysical and spiritual exercise is to kindle no fire. You understand, which is an excellent opportunity for, for ones to heal themselves and to fully experience you understand the true rest of mind but it's not going to just come out of the sky we have to apply ourselves but we have to learn what the application is we have to learn from the instruction manual which is the met of caduce the b-i-b-l-e and not just in reading the bible like we said we got out of a little while ago just telling our brothers and sisters oh you got to read the bible you got to read the bible but now you got to study study the bible and there's no excuse with Google and, and searching and the internet and the ability to get certain reference and resource materials and that are free and you don't have to pay people who can't say oh, I got no money a lot of things a lot of reference and resource materials out there are free you understand and for our part 
at the Lion and Judah Society of His Majesty, we, we seek to provide, you know, free downloads and hopefully y'all willing in the future, even more free downloads. So when we look at the word Kindle, Kindleth, you understand a couple of the, the, the references like Proverbs 26 and 21, where it speaks about a contentious man, you understand, to kindleth, you understand, it speaks about contention, um, it speaks about anger, it speaks about wrath, you understand, both wrath of man as well as wrath of the Almighty, so we have anger, we have wrath, we have any kind of contending, you see what I'm saying, so some people didn't work on that day, but they were very angry on that day they were very wrathful on that day that means that they did not receive yet a reft senbet as a yet as a holistic day you know saying it's a holistic time it's a holistic session it's a holistic opportunity so as we begin to look at the true context of the idea of of, of kindling no fire on the Sabbath day, it's not enough to just say, as one would say, well, well, I'm not working. This is the day I'm not going to work on the Sabbath day. You understand? And they still are angry in their spirit. They still are kindling the fire. They still have anger and they, they have wrath. Or like Baran Salasi Bob Marley would say, they're fussing and fighting. You understand? So if one cannot, you know, one does not um, allow themselves that one day then how can they make it two day? You see what I'm saying? Or three day or four day or so forth. You know what I'm saying? So the Sabbath was one seventh. One seventh of our time. Only one seventh of our time. You understand? And we know that the seven has a lot to do with, some say it's a God number, or it's a, a, you know, some say a perfect, it has a sense of perfection or spirituality in it, but he only acts as one seventh. Just one seventh, just one seventh of our time. If we would just give that one seventh of our time, so this is these are important important um, considerations to consider. So our targum or interpretation of this is that it is not just physical fire. He's not really just concerned with like the flesh of bulls and goats and and, and animals though he, he loves his creatures and, and creation and wants us to also be caretakers of them, you know saying, for, for their good and for our good, but it's about man. This is why Christ would state that the sendet, that the Sabbath was made for who? It was made for man. Man, we were not made for the Sabbath. To understand what the relationship is of us to the Sabbath, so when we look at the word kindle, the whole idea of kindle, even the, the root atanididu, esatin atanididu, it's very easily spiritually to see that the spiritual point of kindling no fire in our dwelling place. While we're dwelling, you understand, in the, the, the spirit of yereft senbet, yetekedesekken, we are to avoid wrath, we to avoid anger, you understand, we to avoid those things as, 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 as much as possible because of the prohibition, not just of the word, but, but, but because of the logical result of, just like it says, for those who work on that day, it didn't say that we are to kill somebody who works on the Sabbath day, no, they're killing themselves. You see what I'm saying? It says, Yemisara betim hulu yikadel. Later on, the Babylonian um, Jews and, 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 and the Babylonian Talmud and what Christ, the other, the Jews who said they were Jews who, who, who Christ contended again, against, they had all of these additional laws and, and traditions and other things and speculations about what should be done and so forth and so on. And the spiritual and the plain meaning was lost on them. So they had certain punishments that they, when they established the Sanhedrin, would actually implement. And in fact, the Sanhedrin...
the truth has overcome the lies, the good news of his majesty in his Christ. And it is vital that we raise our tribal flag, the flag of the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda. Millions of Christians throughout the world, your imperial majesty, will regard you as the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Why not help one another on the way? Basil Majid. Make way. 